Okay, in this video, we're going to be showing our super clean Multicam 3000 series CNC router. This is the 3103. It comes with a 4x8 table. You can see we're booting it up now. This machine has the 5.5 Columbo spindle with the 6 position automatic tool changer. Once this is done loading, we're going to go ahead and home the machine for you. Initializing spindle. A couple of things I look for when I'm buying a machine. One is how quickly and accurately does it find home. If it takes 15 or 20 seconds to find the x-axis home, that's usually an indication of a problem, maybe a bind in the gantry. This machine takes less than 5 seconds and is running very smooth. Now we're going to go grab a tool and do a spindle warm-up. Listen to how quiet this spindle runs as it ramps up. That's the second thing I always look for when buying a machine. If you find a machine that's got a loud spindle, it's growling or grinding, that's an indication you're probably going to need to send that spindle in for a rebuild soon. Okay, we're going to do a quick walkthrough on this machine, try to mention everything that we did for this machine. Uh, we did replace three of the tool cradles, as you see the two holders sitting in those cradles there, the six position tool changer. We paid special attention to the vacuum pump, in fact we're going to have a whole video dedicated just to the vacuum pump overhaul, so you can check that out. There's the six inch to four inch uh, yellow uh, dust manifold drop. Open up the cabinet here, you see the Technic servo drives. The only thing we touched in this cabinet was the on-off switch. It was sticking and not working 100%, so we put a new one in. That's a common weak point on these machines is that control on-off, and this one is now working perfectly. Everything else in the cabinet is good. You've got your servo breakout board and your multicam motherboard. We've tested communication, ran files. Everything is running smoothly in here. By the way, as with many of our multicam CNC routers, we sold this machine new to the customer. I did the original training and setup, so we know this machine well. Uh, only reason the customer uh, released this machine is because they decided to buy a brand new machine. So we recently installed that. Uh, this machine didn't need a lot of necessary parts, but as usual, we went above and beyond with what we do when we come in here. And we replaced the bearing cars on the x-axis. There's four of them. Uh, two in the front, two in the rear. So those are all running on smooth, brand new bearing cars. You can see how clean those are here. And a few months ago, the customer did replace the entire Z-axis assembly with new ball screw. So that's fresh, should give you many years of life. What I'm gonna do now is run the machine down in medium speed. At the medium speed in the shop, On all three axes, you really can't hear any of the movement. What I'm doing now is letting you hear a full speed park command. This is probably the largest stress test you can do on one of these machines as we hit the accelerator to 100% in every direction. And then we slam on the brakes at the end of the table. We'll come back at medium speed. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a tool for you here, so you can see another tool change. In addition to the four bearing cars we replaced, we also decided to replace the two spur gears on the x-axis motors, giving the gantry the smoothest possible, freshest running parts. Again, we just kind of go above and beyond on some of these machines to put them in a condition that you're really not going to find anywhere else on the market. We're going to go ahead and unload that tool for you now so you can hear that. And again, this video is a little bit longer than normal, but during the pandemic, we know that people aren't traveling as much as they used to, so we want to really give any potential buyers a full experience on this machine without having the expense 
and the hassle of traveling out of their area to see the machine. Once again, parking at high speed. When you're buying a CNC router with ProTec machinery, not only are you getting a good value, but we also want you to feel safe and comfortable while still having an opportunity to see the machine in action. Now I'll talk just so you can tell that I'm not muting this volume, but that's the medium speed and I can't hear that x-axis, that gantry, I cannot hear that moving down the track. Same with the y. And I can move X, Y, and Z at the same time. And those are all virtually silent. Okay, right now we're going to show you how easy it is to calibrate a new tool on this machine. So this is the Multicam 3000 series. I just put in a new tool. As you can see, it's a uh, one and a quarter inch uh, table milling tool. And so I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to go to ATC. And I'm going to go to calibrate tool, which is the first option. It's going to say, do you want to calibrate tool six? I'm going to say yes. It's going to come up in the Z and move back above the calibration block with tool six. Now, the only thing I need to do at this point is put on the grounding magnet. Now. That's going to be right here. Now, traditionally, uh, these machines came with a grounding collar. So we'd actually put a collar around the tool up in here. And it would do the same thing. Basically, we're just, we're just having a ground to the tool because of our ceramic bearings and spindle. But the new machines now come with a magnet. And we actually have the magnets and, and parts here to do that. So typically, when these come in, these wires are damaged. The collar has been missing for years. So we'll put a new rare earth magnet on here. Um, screw it down with the wire, and so it makes for a really easy to use uh, rounding magnet. And funny thing is, is that's actually what the factory does now with new machines. So at this point I can Z down to get close. I can stop at any time, whatever I'm comfortable with. And I can actually move it in X and Y if I want to. That should be centered over the, the block. I can see that right there. Hopefully that's not in your way too much. And at this point, I just hit zero to auto set. You can see that right on the screen there. Zero to auto set. So if I hold the zero button, it'll automatically come down. And as soon as that makes contact on that pad, it'll automatically pop up. That's it. That tool's been calibrated. I can cancel out of the calibration. Go back to my main menu, and the calibration's done. So this machine does come with a 10 horsepower Multicam turbo vac. We're going to turn that on right there with that switch. Again, this entire machine is single phase power, meaning you can use this in any shop or even in a home shop or garage. That surface pad is already sticking to the table, and we haven't machined this MDF yet. The set surface button is right there, and it works a lot like the calibration function ask us which tool we're going to say yes for tool six and then zero to auto set and this that's going to tool's going to drop right down on our surface block and as soon as it makes contact it's going to bounce up and that's it one of the things we do with every machine that comes into the showroom is a table milling function this tests a variety of the functions from x y and z movement the spindle the vacuum pump, material hold down, uh, just gives us a really good idea of how the machine's functioning. And also, by testing the spoil board, which we'll do later in this video, we can make sure that that spindle has been mounted properly and is straight to the table. You can see this portable dust collection stand we're trying out today. That is also available if you need something like that in your shop. And you'll also see some of those older 480 volt three phase Becker vacuum pumps in the back. Those are also available. As you can see, this machine is doing a great job making a super smooth cut on that spoil board. After I do a table milling, I like to take a few pieces of scrap. This is some melamine. And I like to throw it on the table and see how quickly and how hard it sticks to the table. 
Now this one I'm able to get just an inch of movement or so, but keep in mind that entire table is a wide open vacuum leak. If you had a full sheet on there, that small part would not have a chance of moving. And I would have no problem cutting these parts on this machine. There's a piece of plywood with a little bit of MDF. Same thing, instantly sucks down. I get a little tiny bit of movement, but not much. And then here is a piece of melamine with edge banding. Normally these won't stick at all because the edge banding is usually just a little bit raised. And if we don't have a completely flat surface, it doesn't stick well. But even this one's difficult for me to move. And again, using a wide open leaking vacuum table with no other material on top. So final results, super smooth finish, even with a small 1.25 inch diameter cutter. With a three wing larger diameter cutter, you're gonna get even better results. And you wanna check and make sure you run your fingernail over that and it doesn't catch. That means the spindle is straight and true to the machine. We don't need to make any further adjustments with that. Okay, that's it for the quick overview on this machine. Here's a quick preview of our upcoming video, which is a detailed walkthrough, more of a technical video on all the different things we did for this machine, from changing out the spur gears to the bearing cars and all the different things we did to the vacuum pump. Uh, we're gonna be going through that in detail, so if you like that kind of stuff, I'll provide a link in the description below. Lastly, a look at the grounding magnet. We just make this up with a screw, a washer, a nut, and the rare earth magnets. Put that into a wire, and then we can use that as our grounding magnet. We just stick that to the tool holder and set our surface or calibrate our tools using that. And that's what the factory does now instead of a plastic grounding collar. Thanks for watching this video. For more information, please contact ProTech Machinery.